everything here, and we're going to add our last couple parts. The first thing we need is another resistor. I'm going to copy this resistor, add it in right there, and let's touch its value up here, 1.5k, and then we need two more parts. We need a 0.0033 UF cap and our level output. So we're going to add copy and paste another, um, another part pot here. Yeah. It doesn't say what our value is on this here, does it? So we can sort of select our own value later on. So what I can even do here is just take out the value of that entirely and just say level. There we go. Now, I might probably desire to try an A100K because I know that that would probably be a very valuable thing. Next thing I can do here is I can add our output pad here, right to pin 2, which is what it's telling me to do. And then draw a quick line here that'll go to ground later on. Last thing I need here is that cap. So I'm going to go to my library because I sort of know that in my stash what I have for 0.33NF or 0.0033UF caps, which are the same thing, is I use a film box cap. And I've got a bunch of different box cap sizes here that, to choose from. I use um, point, uh, point, or, or, um, 5 millimeter pin spacing. So right there, these are all my 5 millimeter pin spacing caps right just like that and I've got just different widths I know that mine is actually 3.5 millimeters wide even though you know this might indicate for a different size that's what I know my part is already so I'm gonna just gonna add that in there I'm gonna draw my electrical connections in I'm gonna put its value at 3.3 NF which is the same as writing 0.0033 UF or writing 3 and 3. It's all the same way of saying 3.3 NF capacitor. Right? So there we go. We've got all of our parts in. Uh, two more things we need to do is figure out where we're going to attach power and ground to our IC and this mystery pad. Oh, what's going on with that? So remember before I added this thing in, well this is actually going to be end up being my, um, my pad for attaching an LED to the circuit because we still have to add power and ground to the circuit and I'm going to want to add an LED to the circuit and I'm also going to want to add some power filtering to the circuit so I'm not actually done adding parts what I'm going to do right now though is I'm going to add uh, from my supply a pad for introducing uh, 9 volts into the circuit so here we go we've got a plus 9 volt T you can see it gives me a pad if I use the regular plus 9 volts it doesn't add a pad. This is the one that adds a pad. So I'm going to add that part in right here. Here we go. We got plus 9 volt right there. Okay. So let's add a CLR, a current limiting resistor for this LED. I'm going to add it in right here. I'm actually going to change its value to my favorite value only because I have a billion of them. Um, not really, but 4.7K. Resistors, I bought a ton and ton and ton of them, so I use them all the time for that. And I'm also going to change the name from R5 to CLR. This is an easy way for me later on to identify which which one, uh, which pad I'm looking for, which part I'm looking for if I'm looking for my CLR. Rather than having it be called R5, I just know that I can call it CLR. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add my electrical connection here. Uh, I'm going to connect this in to pad. Now, notice it says here, you, it wants to emerge uh, N23 or net 23 into supply net plus 9 volts. I'm going to say yes. There's an interesting thing here. I'm going to use the info tool here for a second here. If you if you go along and t click on these green lines here, you can s find out the names of them. The name N1, net 1. Uh, here is net 2, I think. Yeah, net 2. And it just progressively will be naming them as you go along here. Look, we've got net 12 over here. We've got net 13. Well, right here, if I click on this one that's attached to that 9 volt pad, it actually is called plus 9 volts. It's not just called net something. It's actually not, it, this, this line itself is, is the same as that pad. It's just this part represents the pad. This is important because now what we can do is we can, um, you know, rename these nets to something. So I could, for example, name this net plus 9 volts. 
Oh, sorry. I said equal plus 9 volt. It might not let me. See, it says name already exists. Use the name command to combine the nets. So I can use this name tool, go plus 9 volts, and it wants me to connect these two. So I say yes. Now, electrically, that means that this is identical to this. It totally screws up the rat circuit. So we're just going to have to undo everything back until we have, oh, we do that one. Back until, so if I go here, this is still a net tool, right? Net N12. And we've got, you know, plus 9 volts over here. We don't want that to be. But this, but you see what I'm saying is I can, I can totally adjust all the nets to be what I, I want them to be called. And that can actually make connections without actually drawing them which is a fairly powerful tool, especially when we get into grounds. Um, so the next thing we need to do, the last sort of couple of things I want to do uh, is I want to add a diode for reverse voltage, which is a problem. So we'll save, save some of our parts by wrecking a diode, which is super cheap. I think I got them for a ridiculously cheap thing. I'm going to use my 1N400X tool, which gives me a, a, a rectifying diode, which I can go 4001, which is my typical rectifying diode that I use. I'm going to connect that in here. Oh man, i got to zoom in here. I'm going to connect this. I'm going to end up connecting that to ground. And then my last part I'm going to grab here is I'm going to use an electrolytic capacitor uh, to filter out our power, give it, um, uh, reduce the noise, that sort of stuff. I have 0.6 uh, millimeter here round capacitors for my 100 UF value, which is the value that I'm going to use. So I'm going to find the right part here, add it in, tell you what its value is, is 100 UF, draw my electrical connection, use something for ground here. Uh, okay, so now all those are added. Now I still have to add grounds and power for my IC. Now one way I could do that is simply by connecting pin 7, which I know is the power input for an LM308. If you didn't know that, there are ways to find out. Generally, it means looking at data sheets. The data sheet I had didn't tell you that, but there are ways to look it up, uh, I promise. As you get better at this, you'll learn them. Um, so I can just draw a line here and go bam like this, connect. It says, do I want to do that? Yes, I want to do that. Okay, so we can do that, or we can do it a different way. Do you remember that 9-volt part that I showed you in my supply uh, list? right this one here without the pad if I add this one here this is the equivalent what it's doing is it's asking me to rename that now without a pad I have connected those parts I could add this same part and connect this to 9 volt this to 9 volt this to 9 volt and I haven't had to draw lines all over my my um my schematic here all I've done is just added a few little parts and it makes keeps things very very clean it also means that I can move all of these parts here around without having to, you know, mess up the lines that I've already drawn. I can add this up here, just like that, and which also makes things a little bit cleaner and tidier. The last thing I want to show you, sort of similar to that, is I'm going to add my ground. So here's my ground connections here. I've got ground T, which adds a pad, and ground, which is no pad. Same thing. I'm going to do the same. I know I want three ground pads, so I'm just going to randomly select right there right there see what it's asking me to do is rename the names to ground same thing right and add one off the end of this right there okay so now if I move these we can see they're connected um, right everything's all connected in which is a great thing and now I can go back go to my ground connection here and add in all the rest of my grounds it's asking me to rename all these line, these nets to ground. I'm fine with that. So now when we go to our PCB, all these parts, even though there's no line dr drawn for them, they're all connected electrically. Right? Do you see that? So now I've connected the ground of every single one of these parts that needed to be connected without actually having to draw in every single detailed electrical connection. Right? So now I've got everything all ready to go. Um, the last thing I always do is I run an uh, electrical rule check. You press the ERC button over here, and look at that. It's telling me that there's all sorts. I'm going to clear all of these things here. It's telling me that there are all sorts of errors. errors. So see this? 
I can clear them all and run it. Look at that, it's telling me all my errors are in just very specific places. Okay, so it says close but un unconnected wires right here. So I'm gonna zoom in here and go look here. So it's what it's saying here is that some of these, look at that, this part here is not connected. And that's why people often will end up with errors or problems when they try to do their PCBs because they're like, what? Why is this not connected? Well, when I added these parts, these parts did not properly connect. So I'm going to see here, if I just put them right there, will they connect now? No, they won't. So what I'm going to actually have to do is delete that line, and I'm going to add in a new electrical connection like that. Now if I grab this part, see there, everything's all connected. So I'm going to run an electrical rule check. Notice that half my list is now gone. That's a great problem to have, isn't it? Right? having the list diminish. Okay, so um, so now the rest of my errors are actually pretty typical. So what it's saying here is, is it says the power pin of the IC is connected to the nine volts. Are we sure that we want to connect the power pin to nine volts? In this case, we know that yes, that's true. So we're gonna prove that error. Now it's saying the power pin IC V minus, which is our ground pin on the IC is connected to ground. Are we sure that we want to do that? Of course we are, approve. Last but not least, it's giving me three similar errors. It's saying pad one, pad two, and pad three have no values. Remember I was adding in names and values on parts? Well, I'm gonna add some values here. I'm gonna call this one in, I'm gonna call this one LED, I'm gonna call this one out. In fact, I'm gonna even rename them. So I'm gonna go I for in, L for out, or L for LED, and O for out. It's really simple names, keeps it every, everything very clean. And then when I run my electrical rule check again, look at that, two approved errors or warnings. That's it, everything's ready to go. I can even take a look here at what the approved warnings are by pressing the ER uh, show errors button, the big yellow um, apostrophe button. Anyway, so there we go. I'm gonna save this thing as the demo rat. If you're following along with this, this series, you'll be able to find all the files uh, available for upload um, in uh, the at the uh, at the the sharing site, um, the you know Effects Pedal Builders United. Uh, we will all be sharing these sorts of things, and this file that I've created here, you are free to use for whatever purposes you might desire, whether it's to make your own version of a rat or uh, to make a you know, build an empire of boutique effects, you're free to use it. This is something I'm just creating for the community, just tidying it up. Last but not least, you can add some text here. And right in my test is, you know, free to use, right? And I can write it in on my nets or my info. That's what this thing is. It tells you what layer you're writing it on. Free to use. I'm going to bump its size up to 150. There you go. All done. Um, there's so much more to the schematic tool. Hopefully I've showed you enough here that you can really begin to sort of start to see how many different ways you can use the schematics here. The next thing to do would be to create PCBs. And I'm gonna show, there's gonna be a couple different um, tutorials on that one. Thanks for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it and uh, be safe. All right, bye.